so glad that you all could be here. We appreciate it. There was a lot of interest in this. You know, it's really interesting when we, we start doing this, the, how many people have started doing it. They say, well, I can't be on Thursday, but they sign up, register, and they're, so they're seeing it on, we're getting comments on YouTube, you know, yeah. seen on YouTube. So if you're, however you're joining today, we really appreciate your time to be here. HGA webinar series number 112. 112. Or, 112. Yes. Um, yes, Johnny. And uh, Randall Lee, you know, Trevor Nelson, myself, Jason Hello. Ledlow, we're so Hello. glad you could be here. You know, we are in the um, nonprofit. We try to do this because we want all these questions. So anything that comes up, questions down below, uh, uh, put it in the chat. Give us a question along the way. Stay to the end. If you're here live, you're going to win a trip. We're going to give away a trip that you can use in your next uh, fundraiser to raise mm -hmm. more money. And mm -hmm. um, we're really glad you could be here. Hey, yeah. Randall, I see you're muted. So unmute because we're going to get this thing underway. Yeah. Randall, what's up, man? I am, hey, uh, I am here, brother. I am so pumped, pumped to be okay. here today. This is okay. great. Cool. So, um, this, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go, go, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, I, I, was, I was really enthralled with how much uh, feedback we got um, about this presentation at our uh, boot camp, our first ever boot camp that we did in Dallas um, last month. Everyone <laughs> was interested in communication styles and personality types and things and, and what have you. And, and, and the self-assessment um, uh, test that, that you performed. And, and so we're bringing it to everybody again. Um, we're, we're bringing it to the audience again. And this obviously is going to live on in perpetuity. If you were at our boot camp, you only saw it once and you had to be in there in person. <laughs> so, but this is really, really cool. And um, yeah, everyone, everyone responds really, really favorably to this information, Randall. So um, well, I can think I talk about, can I say something about why I think this is? Sure. Well, I think it's fascinating well, first off. And, and why this is such an interesting deal, because asking for money is really hard. Mm. It's, it's really difficult, you know, and, and if anybody here says, oh no, it's easy. Well, we're going to have you come on and talk about you're it. You're a unicorn. Because uh, you're a unicorn. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to take a picture and, with you. <laughs> you know, we did some, we did some studies and in, in staff, boards, committees, it's about a 90% what we call a call reluctance. Uh, mm -hmm. In other words, you're reluctant. You don't want to do it. You know, you'll, you'd rather go to the dentist and have a tooth extracted than, than go make a call. And so I think that's what makes this, but yet we're professional fundraisers. So that's what we do. You know, mm -hmm. we're here to invite people to be a part of that. And I think the thing about Randall's information is it's going to give you a lot more confidence when you implement this, when you walk in to understand who you're talking to. Mm-hmm. Because, Absolutely. you know, and, and there's some indicators and I'm going to push Rand a little bit on this because we're not always talking to them, you know, in their office. Sometimes we're, you know, talking to them somewhere we're meeting, on but, the you Zoom can machine. Still pick, but you can pick up some of these things, these styles to understand, help you understand. And I think that's really um, important to equip yourself in every way possible when you're going to go talk, talk to somebody so you know you can get to where they're at and understand where they're coming from as soon as you can absolutely because it ma matters so um mm -hmm. you know randall when when you started talk, how how long ago did you start figuring this out where you're profiling people into one of the in one of these four categories well you know jason and trevor most of my career has been spent in dealing with not-for-profits and i really learned about this as I lobbied at the state capitol. Mm -hmm. I found that, uh, it's very effective to understand what a legislator's communication style is because you, you go in and you have a very limited time frame in which to discuss your matter in most cases, or sure. they make it seem like you have a, a limited amount of time uh, because they feel they're important. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's critical that you understand how do I get my message across to this particular person in spite of myself. And, and so it was started probably 25 years ago. And I searched around, you know, all of us that have been in not-for-profit work, probably been through the colors, the, the rainbows, the, the personalities, things, the NTGAs and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But what I really wanted to do was find a way that I could understand the person that I'm talking to without knowing, are they an NTJA or a G, you know, all those right. things that you have to determine. Yeah. Uh, I wanted a very quick way for me to understand the way I communicate and what those other communication styles are so that I could adapt my communication to their style. Because I think the tension that we all feel in not-for-profits is 
uh, especially at the board level and volunteers and sometimes at the donor level, um, is that the tension is the dynamics between those styles. And if you don't understand the style of those people you're communicating with, you'll find a lot of, uh, uh, as I said, tension or disagreements or certainly longer meetings than they need to be. Um, so it's very important that we understand and quickly understand. And, and you bring up a good point, Jason. I think in, in today's world, as I found this uh, communication styles test, which it's not a personality test. It's no. only a communication styles test. And, and Trevor, I don't mean to, to get on to you, but I, I really want to really focus on the fact that this is only about communication. It's not has nothing to do with um, their personalities. Uh, mm. It's a function of their personality, obviously, mm -hmm. but it's communication. Mm -hmm. But in today's world, yes, we, we are doing more Zoom meetings. We are mm -hmm. doing uh, more phone, more certainly more text and more email. And I think as we unpack this, we're going to find out that even in those elements of communication, if you ascribe and practice to these different styles, you will be able to pick up fairly quickly, and I won't jump too far ahead, very quickly into what those styles are. And so make a mental note, if not a physical note, to say, Joe Bob Burcell is a doer. Well, you're going to understand what a doer means. And so if you're a thinker, mm -hmm. you'll understand how to communicate with a doer, which right. becomes very uh, confrontational if you're not careful and you don't understand that communication style. Well, and when you say confrontation, it's not because this person doesn't care. It's not that they don't have a tie to the mission or they don't have the ability or anything. And it's not a, a quote unquote personality conflict. It's a communication. And, and I think that's really important to say, well, that guy's just kind of, you know, every time I talk to Jason, he's just kind of a, he doesn't really talk. He's just kind of moves on and he doesn't really care about what I'm talking to him about. Doesn't want to listen and, you know, just move. Well, they might take that to be that I don't care, but the fact mm -hmm. is, you know, I'm an ex. I'm not even going to try to explain You're an what intuitor. I am. I've, I've t I'm an intuitor. Yeah, I don't. E I'm really still not sure. What I have that the means. results right here. I, I see there's a few intuitors in the audience, <laughs> as a matter of fact. Well, why don't we talk? Awesome. So we're talking yeah. about these communication styles. Why don't you just go through that with us, Randall, and tell us about sure. what the different styles are? Yep. Sure. We, I, I, uh, this test that you have taken, hopefully, um, yep. identifies I four, four major communication styles. Now, mm -hmm. I, I want to emphasize going in here that obviously this is not totally scientific. So it's more of a generalization, but it is very intuitive as you at uh, being an intuitor, oh. uh, intuitive really boil down these styles. So first Let's of all, um, yeah. you know, what is perceived to be the most attractive communication style or person for a not-for-profit is a doer because yeah. doers are seen as somebody that accomplishes things, somebody that moves things forward, somebody that has a lot of energy, somebody that can uh, is not afraid to move forward. Mm -hmm. You have a thinker who their, their um, primary goal is to receive as much information as possible in order to make a, in order to make a decision. Then you have the sensor who is the friend to everybody. And mm -hmm. we all know a sensor who, uh, we really like to be around. They like to be around us. They're they're somewhat informal. Um, they don't like confrontation. They don't like conflict necessarily. These are the folks that love to do business on the golf course. They love to do business anywhere else but a, a really tied down, tied up place. Right, right. Then you have an intuitor who is, so I call them the squinters. Um, and I don't mean that demeaning, but typically as I've dealt with a, a particular intuitor in my life, um, yes. anytime they say something, I go, huh? Yeah. Um, so uh, I don't really understand. These are the folks that can kind of figure out how to feed the starving children in Somalia by doing a golf tournament. Um, right. they, they sort of sometimes jump around. They're very big picture oriented. Yes. Doesn't mean they're bad, but they're just very big picture oriented. And, the, and that's so, the most rare outcome of the test, correct? It's, it's uh, I won't say it's the most rare, but it's typically, if you do this in a room of 30 people, you're yeah. probably going to only have one, maybe two intuitors in the room. Yep. Yep. So it is a, it is a unique style of communicating. Mm -hmm. And it's one that's very hard to, to deal with, quite honestly, uh, for all communication styles, because they are such big picture, it's yeah, tough to keep them keep them on task and on track. Little, 
It's a riddle, yes. human riddle. <laughs> yeah, I think the they best, gave me. But riddle. hey, by the I way, you and two are out there the that. best. The best possible way, Randall. I just want to absolutely a, you know, footnote to that yeah. is that this is not yeah. a bad thing to be an intuitor. You're yeah, no, none of the no. no, there there are no bad communication exactly. styles. Let me exactly. rephrase that. And there's no yep. bad communication styles. Yep. There are bad ways in which we deal with that. But Correct. no, everybody's Good valuable goal. and their style is important. And Perfect. it's actually important to have all of these communication styles involved in your organization. Well, okay. and you know, we can I explain think, that. Think, go into that a little bit more. I had a, well, if, I, I have if a question too. Go ahead. Go, go ahead. ahead. Yeah. Is it is it most important actually, Randall, to understand your communication style and who you are first before you start getting out in the world? If there was a perfect playbook for this, sorry to interrupt you, but is, it, is there no, just like a, a perfect question. scenario where it's like I want to know who I am first before and how I'm going to be able to be relatable to others as I figure out who they are and their communication style. Oh, ab absolutely. And I would encourage everybody, if you haven't taken the assessment, please do. Doesn't take yeah. very long. And cool. Trevor, you're exactly right. Okay. Um, take the time to understand what your style is. And as we go through this information, kind of plug that into your um, um, communications mm -hmm. uh, effort in your brain and mm -hmm. say, this is what I am. And I yeah. need to understand what I am. Therefore, how do I uh, manufacture my discussion with another communication style so you're exactly yeah. right and how you're perceived and you mentioned this and i thought this was lovely in our conversation that we had this week already how you're perceived is especially if you're the face of the organization or one of them that's how your organization is going to be perceived so it's kind of a loaded question you know yeah absolutely you know I think and again i'll go back to you know uh doers are typically the ones that we all think are the the A personalities, which they are, but the personalities and communication people we want on our boards. And But as we go through these, I think we can show you that um, it's very, very valuable to have each and every communication style present on your board, in your volunteers, right. and even in your donor base. But sure. understand yourself before you try to go out and manufacture your pitch for another communication style. Perfect. I think that's awesome. All right, I won't interrupt again. No, that's fine. <laughs> um, I um, uh, well, I think we're going to go through this. So I've got some, I've got some pictures. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it up and, and share that we can kind of do this because I think this is a really clever, um, thing that you have. And I'm just going to share my it. screen. Yeah. I think everybody will be able to see it. Okay. Yeah. 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 And I want to apologize. I am not a technology genius, so these won't be pretty as Courtney from uh, HGA can make them, but uh, they are uh, down and dirty as I would call them, but it's an yeah. easy way to explain these communication styles. Awesome. Yeah, this is cool. This was impactful for me when I saw it for the first time. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Good stuff. Uh, any questions before we get into the, in the, not into the weeds necessarily, but we start to, um, uh, dissecting each one of these communication cells. Any questions we have from anyone currently? Well, as, they, as, as they may be inputting those, Trevor, I would say that uh, first and foremost, it's, it's not difficult to determine a communication style in person, okay. but it is as important, in my opinion, to go to those person's offices yes, you mentioned um, those, and look really at those happened. offices because looking at these pictures, I think we're going to be able to show you a very quick way to understand their communication style and then adapt your message accordingly. And then subsequently in future discussions, you're going to understand how to keep that um, style in your mind. And uh, I would encourage you to even uh, put it on paper or uh, put it somewhere where you can look back and say, Joe Bob Russell's a doer. Uh, I'm a thinker. So here's what I need to do in order to communicate my message to Joe Bob Russell. Right, right. I thought that was impactful when you said you should go out and proactively meet your board, for instance, uh, at their, you know, at their office, at their location. I thought that was fantastic feedback. I think that's sure. And again, as, as Jason's pulling the pictures up, you know, within a text and an email, um, you're going to find, I think, the ability also to determine a lot of their communication style by just the way they do text and the way they do um, emails. So the first picture you're going to see here. Um, we got, is, we, got a lot, we got a lot going on here. Okay. There's a lot going on on that, on that desk is what I'm saying. Oh, oh yes. Well, this is, um, as, as the picture showed. Yeah. If you walked into this person's office, Hopefully we can see that. this is the quintessential definition of a doer. 
Yep. A doer is a person that always is moving, always thinks they don't have time for anything, always tells you they have five minutes, get to the point, mm-hmm. always uh, thinks they're <laughs> accomplishing things. If you walked into this office, you could immediately see that this is a doer's office. And how can you tell that? Well, as the uh, as the uh, the copy says, and I'll just kind of uh, go off of that. And in yeah. addition, add some things. You'll notice yeah. his desk, his desk, and this is a he. The, his desk is completely covered with file folders. You'll notice that the file folders are colored. Why yeah. is that? Well. That way it's easy because he's so busy, he needs to have a color-coded file system so he can know which file is which and where to go, and he doesn't have to look. So he's got all the files he's working on, has worked on. Maybe this is his entire year is on his desk. Uh, So you're going to walk in and see that. First thing that you want to do, though, is you'll look around on the walls, too, and you'll find that in a doer's office, probably very few pictures. And if there are pictures, they're going to be ones they bought at Hobby Lobby or some little store or given to them. Or a gift. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or in some cases, not even hung, because guess what? I don't have time to hang the picture. Yeah, I don't have time to do that. So they're either sitting on the floor or whatever. Um, There'll be dust in most of the areas because uh, (laughs) he doesn't have time to clean. Now, you will also notice, take a look at the computer screen. Mm -hmm. A doer typically... Doesn't have time. I'm a doer and I can relate to this. You know, I, I'm not going to spend 20 minutes putting my family pictures on a screensaver. I, tell yeah. you, I got too much to do. That doesn't make me more important, but I just I have too much to do. I'm not going to do that. So you'll notice his screen is is the Microsoft screen because he doesn't have time to do anything else. And in fact, he doesn't even have anything on his screen right now because he he's too busy with his file folders that are on his desk. You will also notice he has a calculator. With the tape. Why? Well, because uh, at this point in time, um, he didn't want to pull the app up on his phone for the calculator. He wanted one right there and it'd have a tape so he could put it in the file and find it later because he's too yeah. busy to review it now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, This guy showed then, you all the cards, didn't he? Yeah. Then you look right there. You look in the picture and you'll see a printer on the back table there. Why? He was the only one in the office that had a printer in his office. Why? Well, didn't have time to walk to the printer to pick it up. So he needed a printer right at his desk so he could turn around and pull that off the printer and put it in one of those color-coded files. Yep. Maybe um, I'm perfect. It's a little easier yep. now. Yeah, yep. thank you. Yeah. Um, you, will, you will notice behind him also these file holders. Now, yes. these are folders that are probably from a year to two years ago, but he still believes he needs them, and he's too busy to file them in a regular right. file cabinet. So you'll notice that they're colored as well. and. Uh, if you ask a doer, well, how, if you ask them for a piece of information, they're probably going to sift through that pile on their desk. They may know exactly where it is, but mm-hmm. they're going to sift through that pile. So with the doer, you're going to immediately know that this person thinks that they don't have enough time for you. And so your messaging ought to be, and as you develop your messaging, develop your messaging for each and every one of these communication styles. But this person is not going to sit through a 30 minute meeting and go through an extended gen- agenda, read a bunch of stuff, look at a bunch of stuff. They're going to want to know what are we going to do, when we're going to do it, how's it going to get done. Right. And uh, that's all they want to know. And if you can provide that in a very quick manner, then they're going to be appreciative of the fact that you spared them the time, uh, what somebody normally might spend. You understand how they communicate and you can get right to the point. So they're very bottom line oriented. They're not going to want to go through the, here's the budget for the golf tournament. They're going to want to say, how much are we going to make? That's yeah. what they want to know. Well, we're going to make 20,000. Yeah, I think we ought to make 25. What do we need to do to get that? And then, uh, but and they don't have suggestions, but they will, they will, they will be bottom line oriented. Most common so that, communication style. I almost say most common. It's the most very prevalent, though. Very popular style from the okay. standpoint of again, I'll go back to most people uh, believe that a doer is the most successful person in a business environment, and okay. I would submit to you that that's not the case. But in most cases. They are so such a driving force. Mm-hmm. That's why people tend to defer to them because the they have such a strong yes, they have such yes. a strong uh, mentality about what they want to get done. 
Awesome. Anybody? Awesome. So I just want to know anybody identify any doers in your in your sphere. Anybody? Can I get a show yeah, of hands on your board? If you've your, got like yeah, board or maybe staff. you know besides yeah. yourself that person, major donor. Yeah, but you can kind of tell. Got a couple people. Yeah. Cool. Well, you know they they probably understand your mission if you're there. So you know, especially a doer, you don't need to regurgitate. Here's our mission. Um, we really need your help. Uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, they really want to know bottom line. So then we go to the thinker office. Oh, now the thinker it. office. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. Right. Did I get no, that out right. of order? No, that's that's okay. a beautiful We're desk. That's okay. a beautiful We're desk. Thinker. Yeah. All right. If you if you look at this, and actually when I took this picture, the young lady that um, owns this desk said, "Man, my desk is really messy. I don't I don't know if I want my picture taken." She but you'll notice every day cleaning that. Yeah, thing but you'll notice that it is void of those file folders. It is yep. void of a mess. Um, that computer is turned off. Why? Because they want to conserve the energy um, of the computer. You know, whereas the doer is going to leave theirs on all the time. Oh and they're the most likely to get hacked because they have very little security on their computer unless unless they uh, have a, a corporate uh, firewall system or something like that. But a thinker thinks that, well, I need to turn my computer off. They take the time to turn the computer off, <clears throat> excuse me, to file away their information, to um, look at things in a very structured way. So let's say you're a doer. OK, yeah. you're yeah. a doer. You only want to spend five minutes in their office. Why? Because you've got so many things you want to do. Yeah. You want to get after it and get done in five minutes. Well, when you go into a thinker's office and you can look at a thinker's um, walls as well. Now, they may have a few pictures on it. They may have some, but you'll notice in that particular picture, the pictures are facing the person. Whereas a doer, if they have any pictures on their desk, it's going to be facing you. Because they want you to know that they are something. And I don't mean that in a negative way. It's just a, a quirk. <laughs> so you'll notice in this desk, all the pictures are no, facing the person. Because they want to think. Mar I'm, married to a, I'm married to a thinker. We're getting scientific here. And her desk looks, I, I mean, that's exactly. If you walk yeah. into her office, downtown Oklahoma City, and you go in there, that's what it looks like. Everything. Yep. If you look I at, see that we, now. we share an office in our home office. That's what her desk looks like. Mine looks like. I have my printer right here. Yep. I've got the screens going on all the time. I've Couple got pictures of me. files yep. that yep. somebody else has to manage for me. I've got all that stuff. So it's real interesting, those things. But something you just brought up, and this is this is where I can see a huge conflict. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I, I'm curious to see if anybody else has this happen. Because the conflicts that my wife and I have are communication. Mm. Because she's going to ask... 27,000 questions, or it appears that way. She's probably yes. asking two, but I feel like that. And I'm like, no, 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 let's go. It's, it's there. This is what it is. It's a good, let's go, go, go. She does that. And I have That's that so doer, funny. you know, that, that I'm probably a, I may, I'm an intuitor with a doer wing. So yeah, yeah, I would yeah. say that's me. Oh my gosh, and, that's well, T. That's totally just, T. I, yeah, just imagine that. And really where this, where this piqued my interest was back in the day, I uh, was in a chamber of commerce and we had a big, rodeo parade every year and on this rodeo parade committee we had a number of people it was a rather large committee we had one gentleman who never said a word during any of the meetings he uh, just sat there and reviewed the information yeah. and the impression that you might get is that they were disinterested um, but yeah. as we moved along and as i understood i then asked him a question um, and engaged him during the meeting and asked well what do you think and he sat there for a moment and he goes, well, why do we have the girls gymnastic team after the horses? Mm -hmm. And so if you think about a horse and the deposits they make on a street and then a gymnastics team doing flips wow. in the street. Wow. Good point. Good point. So we changed, changed the lineup. But if I had never asked him a question, he may never have offered that because thinkers mm -hmm. typically they want to, I don't say they want to be asked, but they need to be asked in order to share their opinion or their thoughts because they're always thinking. So as you go into a, a thinker's office, pretty quickly, you're going to be determined, you're, you're going to be able to know um, that they're going to need an awful lot of information. And if you're a doer, it's very difficult to expand that, as Jason said, to really get all of the particulars in line. So whereas a doer is very bottom line, if you go into a thinker's office and say, hey, golf tournament's going great, we're gonna to raise $20,000, see you later. 
Uh, you know, they may have a thought, but you never ask them what their thought was. And they may have a great impression or a great intuition as to what they could add to what you're trying to do. So just imagine well, and just how that's going to happen. If I, if I just say how that's going to happen, because again, I'm married to one and, and you guys probably identify somebody in your life this way. My wife's going to go, well, thinkers. how are you going to get that $20,000? Well, we're going to have a tournament. We've got this and this and this. Well, no, no. How are you going to get there? How do you know you're going to be $20,000? Mm. And they're going to start and asking then, questions. And then I, and yeah. it's, and I'm a little, I'm starting to tweak a little bit because I'm like, well, because I said we're going to. Yeah. 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 But so what it yeah. is, and then great you, example. Well, have you thought it, it's back to your point? Why? What do you tell me what you're thinking? Well, exactly. You about giving them the doing, opportunity. Have you thought about this, that that's going to cause, you know, this and you're oh, like, brother, well, no, I haven't thought about that at all. And Trevor knows my wife pretty well. So, um, that's She'll ask exactly me questions it. about coffee that I make. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, well, so how do you perfect. get the grind? And I love it. The reason is because she it. wants to be able to replicate or duplicate it, whatever. Yep. yep. And I, and so I see, you know, in my own world where those two conflicts happen, and I can imagine that if you, or if you're the information person, if you're the thinker yeah, and you've got 37 data points that you're going to make yep. and you take that to a doer, they're going to be going, Hey, yeah, uh, I got to go. Yeah. And I you're going to feel hey, like you, you just Randall, missed out. And what happened is you just bombarded them with too much stuff. If you just said, are you in or you out? I'm in, let's go. I'm getting out of order here, but so yeah. I, I think I know the answer, but it's, if you are the thinker and you have those 37 data points and they're poignant, Mm -hmm. And you want to talk, and you and your your recipient is a doer. How do you approach it? You, do well, you preface do you preface it with, "Hey, I have a lot to tell." I mean, you just like show them the whole roadmap. I need you to hang on here with me for a second without sounding too condescending. Like, what do you do, man? Absolutely not. If you're okay. a thinker and you're going into a doer's office, as that picture was, you need to understand you have five minutes or you there have you thirty seconds to really pique their interest. In the first thirty seconds, you've got to pique their interest in order to get to that five minutes. So yep. if you're a thinker, it's very hard to, to get out of that mindset of, yep. well, I need to tell them everything because I need them to understand what we're doing. I want them to understand what we're doing. I want them to feel good about what we're doing. They don't care. They got too much to do. Uh, they understand your mission. They care about your mission. They want to help you with your mission, but they don't want to know everything. So, for mm -hmm. example, a doer is not going to necessarily ask you, well, what are our expenses on the golf tournament? They're going to want to look at the bottom line. The yeah. thinker is going to go through that budget line mm -hmm. by line and say, yeah. why are we spending $200 on water? Can we not get that sponsored? I know somebody at Ozarka, water, which is, a, I guess, in Oklahoma. I don't know if it's nationwide. But anyway, sure. a water company. Mm -hmm. I know uh, or Sonic who gives away bottled water all the time with the Sonic okay private label on it oh, I and they, they can give pallets of water away. So they're going to want to know, why are we spending this money? What are we spending here? What was our goal? Where is our goal? What happens if we don't meet our goal? What, mm -hmm. as Jason loves to say, what's our contingency if things go awry? A doer doesn't necessarily care about that. They mm -hmm. just want to know what's the bottom line. So a mm -hmm. thinker, if you're a thinker, it's going to take a lot of discipline for you to, and I will say practice, um, a lot of discipline for you to develop your messaging for these other communication styles. Awesome. But it's right. not impossible. No, it's no, no, not at, no, not at all. Yeah. But it does take practice. It's it a really process. Does. Yeah. 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 But I want to go back to what I said in the beginning. I'm not that smart of a guy. So what I wanted to find was a very quick and simple way that I could determine a communication style because I have a lot of other stuff pretty non-productive going on in my brain. So I needed to understand how they communicate in order to get my message across. Because the frustrating part is, obviously, if you're a thinker and you go into a doer's office and you don't, uh, as Jason was talking about, and you don't understand that communication style, you're going to be very, very frustrated. And yeah. we'll go back to the perception issue. Mm -hmm. Perception is reality. Mm -hmm. Your organization is what people outside of your organization thinks it is. I love so... That. You've got to develop that positive perception by being able to meet them where they are, no matter what your style is. Beautiful point. Beautiful well, speaking point. of styles, we've got one. Let's get let's get we to got a two couple more. more. Yeah, we got two okay. more. Um, All right. So the uh, other one, the other one is the fun one. Um, okay. This is the this is the person, and this is a guy that I know, uh, and he is boy, he is the quintessential sensor. What he looks if like you a walk character. into? 
Yeah, if you walk into a sensor's office, and as it says on the uh, on the screen there, you're probably going to find uh, a multitude of pictures, pictures of even dead people that have been dead for 30 years. But it, it conjures up these positive memories in this person. Um, the, and you'll notice this guy's walls almost completely full of he's got a fish on his wall a lot for goodness of sentimentality sake. yeah that's gonna he wants to start a conversation right so i got this yeah. big old fish on the wall and if somebody comes in says i'm a fish well look at this fish and how where do you fish da, 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 da. so they tend to get off track very easily and they um have a hard time focusing um but they will also typically have an office big enough that has a couch mm -hmm. uh, and a coffee table or big enough for a little table and a couple of three chairs. Why? Well, because they don't like the desk impeding the discussion. They want to be right with you. They want to be in there. They want to know. They want to understand. So as a doer, you go in there and you say, I got five minutes. I want to talk to you about this. You know, the sensors go, well, how's your family? How are you doing? Well, I saw your yard the other day. Those vines on your house just look incredible. How'd you get those vines to grow so fast? And you as a doer <laughs> are going, oh, my goodness. I don't have time um, for this. Sensors but are long-winded, correct? Exactly. The sense, and yes. they love, they, they not necessarily they love to hear themselves speak. What they want to do is hear you have speak. A conversation, yeah. Exactly. They want to hear you speak. So it's very frustrating. And so as a thinker who doesn't talk a lot, goes into a sensor's office, there's that conflict again yeah. of a sensor's going to be talking about all these things and the thinker's going, um, well, I don't know about that, but... Uh, here, here's what I think about that or, or in your mind. And so the perception is you're not very much of a, a communicator or you're sort of cold in a sensor's mind. Yep. So you have to kind of bear your uh, um, your soul, if you will, and say, I'm going to act as a sensor, whether I really like it or not. I'm going to go in and know that the first five minutes of any discussion is going to be irrelevant to anything that we're going to talk about. It's going to be about family, fun, uh, frivolity, you know, those kinds of things. So how are you doing? The feelings kind of thing. You know, they want to know how you feel. So a sensor is pretty fun from that standpoint. But just imagine a board meeting. If you only had these three styles, the doer, the thinker and the sensor, you got the doer is going, well, I, you know, this is going to take 30 minutes. I got 31 minutes yeah. and that one minute is going to take me to the car to get out of here. The thinker's going, I don't have enough information. I need more information. The doer's going, come on, get with the program. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Thinker's going, wait a minute, I, I, I just need more information. How are we going to get there? And the sensor's going, now, now come on, guys. Let's don't, let's don't get testy. Let's all be friends. Um, let's have a good time. And oh, by the way, how about we go to coffee after this 30-minute meeting? Because then we can just kind of talk about stuff. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm not saying any of, again, none of these are bad. But the sensor actually is is a, a good person to have if you're going to talk to another sensor because they, oh boy, they will really understand each other and get after it. And you, as whatever style you are, know that you can interject at some point in time the information that you need to communicate. Yeah. But if you're a thinker, again, you know, you're going to have to understand that those 37 data points that Jason mentioned is going to have to wait till you talk about your dead cat. Yeah. Um and uh, about your mom or about your family and how are they doing or just about things in general, you know, the weather. Uh, yeah, exactly. So yep. you just got to understand that and bear with it. And as a doer, completely frustrating um, uh, from that standpoint. So just yeah. those three communication styles create a lot of uh, tension within any kind of meeting. And if you as the leader don't understand how to harness that or in, in the way I wanted to look at it was preparing those people for the meeting. Yep. So I always like to, if it was a doer, I always like to go to their office prior to a board meeting, go through the agenda very quickly. Here's the bottom line. We're going to need to do this, but we'll need to go through these things, not go through them, but we'll need to go through these three things during the meeting. You okay with that? Okay. I'll get out of your hair. Yep. Then during the meeting, you those three things are brought up. The doer knows you're going to spend time on it, and the thinker will have some time to process the information that you present. The sensor is going to say, "Man, this coffee's good. Where'd you get this Keurig? Um, and uh, I really love this uh, Gatorade that you got. Um, it's perfect. I can't ever find this Gatorade Zero in the watermelon." Uh, yeah. And in my mind, being the doer, I'm going to go, "Are you kidding me right now? Exactly. This guy's, this guy's over. This guy's over here talking about Gatorade." 
I need to go get another color. Like. Yeah, I need to go get a colored. Like. I need to go get a colored folder for uh, the Gatorade. <laughs> so <laughs> as a doer, so I, you know, pardon me, I got a phone call to make. Okay, so, just those three <laughs> styles. Good. <laughs> yeah, and then finally we go to the intuitor, and okay. the yep. intuitor yep. is, um, in some cases, as this person does, doesn't even have a chair behind their desk. Ooh. Now, an intuitor is someone again, as I mentioned, thinks on a very large scale, very big vision you'll notice that there's lots of reference material on their on uh, the on their credenza in some cases it has nothing to do with what they do but they uh, in this case this gentleman was very interested in china so he's got a lot of reference books on china not that he wants to talk about it necessarily but what he wants to do is understand the china dynamic so that he can help them in the big picture of what they do at the um left-handed golfers association, you know? Mm -hmm. So it just, again, you go, huh? But yeah. they are also uh, ascribed to the walking, managing by walking around. They love to go around, not necessarily visit, but they want to talk about, well, what's your vision for the future? What is your vision? What, what mm -hmm. do you want to accomplish with this? So just think about a board meeting with, and again, you'll only find a few intuitors because the, um, they are so few and far between, but just imagine you've got three doers, three thinkers, three sensors, and an intuitor in a meeting. Just as we've talked today, can you see where some of those dynamics come into play? That it, if you as the executive or the uh, the fundraiser haven't done your due diligence in the sense that just sort of showing up and hope it goes all right, then you're going to run into the doer trying to run away with the meeting. The thinkers going, wait a minute, I don't think we ought to do that. Uh, and you haven't given me enough to really prove to me we need to do this. The sensor's going, now, come on, let's just all have this great Gatorade. And then the intuitor's going, well, I, what's this? What are, what's the vision? How is this going to affect the world and the ice cap on the Antarctica? Big, big picture, and, folks. Uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, water coming up. Is it going I, to see, I see this coming through in Jason now. Uh, yeah, as, a, as yeah. an intuitor. Now, yeah. Well, now, I, I, I kind of to kind of kind of finalize, Jason, excuse no, me, sorry, friend, to kind of finalize me. that, that you will find in some cases as you take this test, there may be some numbers that are fairly close. Yeah. And so you may score a doer and a sensor kind of yeah. thing. Well, yep. there's one score that is probably going to be higher than the others. And what that simply means is that when you get an envir in an environment uh, and you're a dual doer and sensor, you're probably going to kind of fall into the sensor range because that's how um the person is communicating to you because there is a theory in communication called the theory of reciprocity. And the theory of reciprocity simply states that you are communicated to as you communicate. Yep. So, for example, you go into a retail establishment and nobody waits on you or they don't ever look you in the eye. They don't ever say, hi, we're glad you're here. Uh, no matter your communication style, you're going to kind of, are you really going to go up to them and go, hey, I'm having a great day. How about you? How are you totally, doing? Totally. No, normally you're going to go, well, it's okay. And what do you do? You walk out the store and you've created a perception with this shopper that's been in there. Same thing in board meetings. As they leave board meetings, they're going to go, man, that was a waste of time, or I didn't get all the information I needed, or they didn't have enough Gatorade or, um, mm -hmm. man, I still don't know what that vision is for what they're trying to accomplish. Now, they may understand to... they yeah. may understand the mission, but they may not see the vision of how to get uh, and work on that mission. I was just talking to Jason about nonverbal cues today. Yeah. So, yeah. Wild. Well, yeah. And it's, now it's I, real, man. It's real. Yeah, it, it's very real. But Trevor uh, and, and mostly because maybe I'm just not that smart. I did my master's thesis in college on um nonverbal communication and Get i learned here. Very, i didn't know uh, that. yeah okay cool, yeah. cool and cool. i learned very quickly that it's very very difficult my yeah. thesis my uh uh dissertation involved a, a girl at a bar okay. uh, and obviously this is when i was younger but the theory was um or it's understood that if there's a lady sitting at the bar and yeah. three guys come up to talk to her yep Whoever she's pointing her feet at is the one in which she's interested. Interesting. Now that's that's you know that was sort of my my thesis. I got slapped a lot in uh, when I was doing my research because I would always be looking at their feet and uh, you know kind of 
talking to them uh, with that. So I'm looking at their feet and they're like, pay attention. And they had to give me a swap across it, you know, so oh nonverbal communication, but also, you know, you're always taught that this means that somebody's not really for you. Uh, you know, in a lot of cases, it's just, that's a comfortable way to sit. Totally. Now it, it, may, it may, it may imply a little bit more, but if you only take that cue in its entirety, you're, you're maybe going to miss, uh, miss something. So that's why I sort of went with the communication styles more than the nonverbal. Oh, because for sure. It's, yeah. It's so, yes. it's so obvious if you, if you go into their offices, you can determine immediately what their style is. Yes. And if you're yes. cognizant of that and you've prepared your pitch for different communication styles, you're going to whip right into it and be very, very, very much more successful so than what good. you already are. So, and, good. Yeah. And more, more importantly, that perception is going to be enhanced of your organization. So when that person goes and says, hey, you know what? This is a really good organization. And yeah. I think you should be on the board yeah. uh, because I just experienced so much good stuff. They're doing good things. I always get the information I need. Um, all of those things, the doer, you know, I haven't I didn't spend three hours in a board meeting. We didn't have a three page agenda. They get things done. I love that. Um, yeah. The sensor's going and they got great Gatorade and the intuitor's going, well, I can kind of see where you're going with yeah. that. Yeah. I think it's awesome because we're constantly, even at the boot camp, when you presented this in person, folks are like, are you sure? I, you know, like they, they, folks need this information because we, we had people in real time talking to us about going and making asks in people's homes mm -hmm. and people's offices. And I just think it's, I just think it's massive. I think it's under, not necessarily undervalued, but I just don't think people are, uh, yeah, they're, they're not, they're not aware of it enough, I suppose. And that yeah, relatability. And, and, well, that, you know, that it really, helps you break you know, through that first level, 100%, that first layer. Because, 100%. you know, if you're talking to, if you're talking to a sensor and you try, and, and I think about, um, so I had a couple of employees that worked for me. This is in, back in my telecom days and um, Marta and Jessica. Mm -hmm. And they were con they conflicted a lot. But if I went to talk to Marta and I I would go and say, Marta, need the report such and such, so and so. Can I have it by Friday? Yep. And I just walk out and that was yeah, it. Marta was a I doer. Mean, just total on fast, quick doing it. If I did that to Jessica, she would come to my office later on and go, Thinking Did I do something wrong? Because yeah. if I'm gonna ask if Jessica, I'd have to say, Hey Jessica, how's everything going? Kids doing well? Everything That's going it. good? Yeah, really? Oh, great. Okay, good. Hey, cool. by the way, um, that report you're working on, uh, do you think you can have that to me by Friday? Awesome. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. And then. Yeah. And I'll give you one other anecdote. Yeah. This really is where it solidified it to me was back in the day, there was a legislator, House of Representatives, very important in the economic development realm. And back in those days, there were no term limits. So if you had a bill that dealt with economic development, this was the representative that you would go take the bill to and discuss it with them. Mm -hmm. Um I and another gentleman were called into his office one time. He shut the door and he said, you know what? Look on this wall. Because we were having some issues on a bill and he was not real happy. He said, look on this wall. And, yes, sir. What? Not a damn plaque from your organization on my wall. Whoa. All the things we've done for I've done for you and there's no plaque. Whoa. Well, guess what? We gave him the next day. Yeah, we gave him a plaque. But, you know, if I'd have known this going in, I would have I would have looked at his office and go, you know, this guy needs that recognition. He likes the recognition. He needs yeah. he needs yeah. to have that. So and and be, you know, be friends. Well, so. I I want to admit that as a young man working in offices uh, in my 20s and early 30s, that I failed miserably. Um because I was moving very, very quickly. I thought a lot of things revolved around me and I didn't, you know, I don't mean that in the worst possible way. I'm not, I'm not a complete, you know what, but um, right. I just thought that everyone kind of needed to get with my program. You know what I mean? And when I started realizing, and this is, check this out. This is very interesting. This is before I got married. Uh, and I probably, you know, I, was, I, I wasn't a great listener. I, I, you know, I've seen a therapist about, about being in sales and being a horrible listener and how it apply, how it um, rolled over into my personal life. And I was just moving too quick, too quick, too quick. And the minute I slowed down and realized these, I didn't have, a, I didn't, I couldn't articulate the different, you know, communication styles and, and, and recipients of my, uh, uh, of my thoughts and words and, and, and messages. Um, but the minute I realized that 
everyone else had their own, it changed, you know what I mean? Dramatically for me, I slowed down. I realized that everyone comes, you know, we're, we're very, we're all very fascinating people. You know what I mean? We have our own styles and whatnot. And when I could be more malleable with that, it changed everything for me, man. It changed everything in a, in a professional sense and a personal sense. I could not, absolutely could not, we could not be doing what we're doing right now with our team and our clients if I was the same person. It just wouldn't work. I just know that from and, my own, you know, experience, you know. So. And, I, and, I, and that's a, it's a very great point. I think, you know, we beat ourselves up a lot on yeah. things. Um, but this is going to take a little bit of time to kind of yeah. ingrain into your system. And you have to want but, it, though, Randall. I mean, you have to want it like a, like a, an acquired skill or talent. Yeah, that's I, there yeah absolutely. You, you know, that's yeah. how I feel. And, and just simply understand, if you don't do this, and I'm not going to say you fail, but sure. there's probably going to be a little bit of conflict. And you may For wonder, sure. well, why are not why are my board me- members not all showing up? Totally. Um, what? And why is that donor so reluctant to to fund our mission? Um, Because you didn't maybe communicate in the style in which they were. Now, go back to the email and text. You know, text messages have become the doer's delight. Interesting. They don't want to talk on the phone. They don't want to chit chat. They're going to send you a three three word text. And people overthink these messages, too, though. Are we good? Now, a a doer typically has three paragraphs going on in their head but they use like three words. Are we good? Or thumbs up? Or what do I need to do next? They already, they have a bunch of stuff in their mind. Or if they're trying to explain something, they have it in their head. And why don't you understand it using those three words? So again, in text and then emails, a thinker is going to love that, you know, uh, bullet point, 37 data points, you know, in an email, they're going to want to know all that. Uh, because they want to read it and they'll they'll do it. A sensor is going to send back a smiley face. You're opening uh, up a whole another can of worms with this, yeah. this, this well, electronic you know, communication. I, I think Seriously. from a practical practical standpoint, you know, like I like I said, I didn't know what these terms were, but I just knew that Marta and Jessica they just communicated differently. Totally. And you know, and so I think that if if we you know practicing it in our office around our you know with the people that we're around. You know, I, my wife is into Enneagrams. I don't know if y'all know what that is. Anybody, you know, um, is it the test that oh, we did? Is yeah, you did it the too. Yeah, it's like, I'm an Enneagram eight. And she goes, yeah, you're such an eight. Ooh. Oh, you're Enneagram six. Oh, you're such a six and all that. Yeah. But what I love about what this, this is, it's not trying to figure all this yeah. stuff out. You're not being typecasted. Different... Yeah. It's just a really simple abbreviated way that with just a little bit of information, if you're paying attention, yep. you can kind of cue yourself you know, I think this guy's a doer yep. and I can just tell that I need to, I need to wrap yeah, it up pretty fast. Totally. Yeah. Oh man, I'm getting 37 questions. I, I'm with a thinker. That yeah. means that doesn't mean it's no, it doesn't I'm mean they're, it's not critical. Yeah. I just yeah. need to give her more information. Yep. I've got a yeah. sensor on my deal. I can't just run in here and start throwing facts and Hey, we're a 501c3 and doing this, 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 and, and throw it at them. They're like, Hey, how are you doing? How's your, I, I need to think about, you know, being a, not maybe a thinking and an intuitor. Since I am one, I still don't really know what that means, but. Well, and nobody really this does. Is how we're, it's yeah, it's like, the, it's kind of like the, the Miss USA. And I want peace of peace, all, 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 you know, peace of all over the world. World yes, peace. Exactly. Yeah. You know, yeah. you got to throw that world peace in. There. I just want to let you know, I'm not going to put your business in the street, everybody, but there's yeah. a few intuitors on this, uh, or two of them, as a matter of fact, you know who you well, are. There's yeah, but I, I, again, I'll go back to there's, right now. yeah, there's no bad, there's no bad communication style. Yeah, we yeah, need yeah. each and every one of no, them because yeah. exactly. if we had a board full of doers, good Lord, you'd be bankrupt in month. It's, it's it, I'm um, not, yeah, it's too homogenized, yeah. man. Yeah, exactly. Be vanilla, that's the spice of life, man. I love that. Yeah, and if you were all saying, I was going to ask yeah, you a very ahead. serious question, Randall. Um, uh, am I in trouble if my wife's all four of these? <laughs> uh, For some crazy reason, I think my wife's all four of these. Am I in trouble, man? No. I'm joking. Well, she, she was, would probably was... very. She probably very. Um, excuse me. She would probably be very unique because yes. most people I have yet to find. I I I teach this to not for profits, uh, uh, and I've done one not for profit for twenty five years. Uh, every year I, I teach this class to uh, a new leadership class in this community and yet to find someone that their numbers are pretty well equal. They're yes. pretty much going to if you're honest with yourself yep. and and honest with your thoughts, 
and not predisposed to say, well, I need to be this, but really be honest and say, okay, how do I answer these questions? Um, mm -hmm. Your numbers are going to pretty much prove that you're going to be one. Now, not to say that they, you won't have uh, all of the aspects yeah. in your communication style, but you're predominantly going to be one. So I want to really kind of stop at this point and say, you know, what we've been talking about, again, is a very quick down and dirty, but don't think that you're going to understand this person solely by going into their office. Sure, um, sure. Yeah, so it's their communication style. So um, very rarely do you find somebody that their numbers are are very equal. If they are, uh, they're yeah. probably in some conflict in their own mind. Uh, because the doer Becky, mind, you must have part of their mind. Becky's oh. having some conflict. <laughs> Becky put down yeah. she was 27, 25, 25, and 23. I am not well, suggesting you have any um, conflict. We're going to wrap Becky, up here. We're going to give away a trip here in just a second. Um, well, I just, let me think. I just want to thank here. everybody. Yeah. If you've yeah. done this test, please, uh, thank you so much. If you yeah, haven't, cool. I would encourage you to do it and then um, spring it on some other folks. Yeah. See, yeah. What, see what their styles are. Other people yeah. you work with, Take it home to your spouse. Now, Jason and I shared the fact that my wife is very much a thinker and it creates a lot of, you know, I'm like, OK, uh, why are you why why are you doing that? Well, we need to do this to get to this point. Well, why can't we just get to that point? So, you know. Hey, uh, Eileen, we'll, we'll, we'll send out the recording. Um, yeah, for sure. With tomorrow. We'll and we'll have, that link yeah, we'll have the well. test. Uh, C Diggity. We'll uh, make if sure you that's scroll in up in the chat, you might be able to scroll yeah. up in the chat. Uh, uh, Courtney put the link yep, in here. She did as well. And so you can get it. But, you know, I, I want to just tell everybody all these things that, you know, we're talking about, like Randall said, this is just another tool in your toolbox. 100%. One more thing that you're going to be able to do and, and just to keep an open mind to these things. Again, you may, cause you know, you may not ever go into their office. Mm -hmm. You know, we do so many things by zoom and phone, but if you yeah, just, if you kind of keep your mind open to it, you can mm -hmm. go, Oh, you know, I can tell by this person must be kind of a, the communication styles of sensor. And we can adapt to that. I mean, as mm -hmm. professional fundraisers, we can adapt to it to go, you know what, just like I did with Jessica, I need to talk to Jessica and ask her about how our kids are and you know, how things are going. Because if I don't, I'm not going to get on her wavelength or, yeah. you know, with Marta, if I start talking about that, she's going to think something's wrong. Cause she's like, why are you, why are we having this conversation? Yeah. Well, and just to kind of finalize as we, as you were talking about zoom, even on zoom, you can kind of determine, you know, doers, we talk with our hands. We're very, mm -hmm. we're somewhat animated. Yep. Uh, thinkers are going to be on the zoom call 10 minutes before it starts. Sure. Because they, you know, they want to be there. They want to be organized. A doer may not even understand how to turn their camera on. But they uh, eventually might get their camera on and they're probably doing something while you're doing the Zoom. So that's an, in, an indication of that. Uh, a sensor is going to you're going to be able to uh, understand them by what's in the background and or the fact that they want to talk about fun stuff, if you will. That's a lack of a better term. And then the intuitors, um, they may have the camera on, but they're walking around their desk um, in the room somewhere. Uh, you never know. So even on Zoom, you can kind of determine if you practice. And I will, I will offer to again. It's not beautiful, and maybe Courtney. I would hate to ask Courtney to to beautify it up because she does so much already. But I've got a list of do's and don'ts with uh, each of the communication styles. And if you guys put in the chat, um, your e or we have we're, we're going to send it out to everybody. Yeah, we're going to okay. we'll send, yeah. we're gonna, we'll send um, it out to everybody. You don't have to put anything so in the chat. You'll have, a, to to everybody you'll have a, a do's and don'ts chart that's yeah. very quick and very simple that even if you don't practice yet, you can look at that chart and say, I'm going to go visit Joe Bob Bursell, and I believe he's a doer. So what do I need to do as a communication? Well, there you go. And oh, what's, the, what's, the, what's the issue with a doer? Well, they... They tend to, to miss deadlines um, because they're doing other stuff. Yep. Um, it's very hard to keep them on, on track. But anyway, uh, we'll send that out to you. And please keep that as a handy reference. Guys, as you go. If you have any questions or you'd like to talk to Randall, you can find, you can connect with Randall at Randall, R-A-N-D-L-E at hgafundraising.com. He'd love to connect with you, talk more about it, questions, um, yeah. give you anything. And if anything else about, you know, Randall's got 30 years of, of working in the nonprofit space in multiple different roles. And yeah. so I think he'd be a great, uh, you know, you'd be time well spent a good spending dude. some time with him. And he's a good, good dude. dude. Well, I'd love to talk. Um, I'd love to talk to anybody and everybody. And 
and and very quickly um uh sign up for a free coaching session too that's yeah, a good yeah, way to, awesome. to get a hold awesome. of us right. okay i've got a winner lynn okay, hill cool. you won a trip lynn congratulations all right lynn. Lynn congratulations hand. Cool, Lynn. Cool. Uh, uh, congratulations. You want a trip that you can use at your next fundraiser to raise more money. And with that, guys, we're going to roll on out of here. I appreciate everybody so much. Um, All Trevor, right. HGAFundraising.com, Jason, HGAFundraising.com. Way to Sign go. Sign up for a free coaching session, and we'll see you next week. Thanks so much, everybody. See you for Go episode forward and conquer. Swing hard. Don't fall down. All right. All right. See you all. Thanks, Randall. That was awesome.